Our first pitch is by Garo Dekasar. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You have two minutes. My name is Garon, as um, Elizabeth stated. I am the founder of the Wani Shop, and the company is here to help you reclaim your crown. Um, just to give you a little um, background on um, what my company does. So there's about 80 million men and women in the U.S. that suffer from hair loss. That's a $4 billion industry. And in also in the multicultural community, hair loss is at epidemic levels, um, where dermatologists are averaging about 25 cases per week. Um, so black, Hispanic, or women in general who have traumatic hairstyle practices where we do a lot of things to our hair, like chemicals and braids and weave and traction, we loosen our hair at epidemic proportion. Um, I am one of these people. Um, but based on my prognosis in 2012, I should be completely bald by now. As you can see, that's not the case. Um, so what I did is I went to the dermatologist and when I was diagnosed, I realized a lot of the medications and um, practices I was offered didn't really help me right away and they also didn't jive with the way I wore my hair. So I used my chemical engineering background from Columbia University to formulate a hair oil. Um, the hair oil addresses the common symptoms of hair loss, which is inflammation, low-grade skin um, infection, and also just really just irritation of your scalp. So I started with the hair oil for myself. And when I started seeing progress in recovering hair from the bald spots I had, I started making it for friends and family just for the fun of it. Um, and that progressed into me selling it. They pushed me to start selling it online. That was back in 2015, and now we have a website. Um, I have about five partner hair salons that sell the products. I even had a dermatologist sell the product on the Upper West Side. Um, we sell online, we sell a pop-up shop, so we have a following on social media, and we're connecting more and more with people who need the service. So I connect with dermatologists. I also went back to study hair and scalp disease diseases with the U.S. Trichology Institute so that I could further my knowledge into the field. And another part of the business that is very big in addition to having a hair care line now that has a um, hair oil, a shampoo, a conditioner, and a hair tea that's good for your skin and your hair. Um, I have a platform where I hold panel events with dermatologists, trichologists, um, just frontliners, who I call them, to number one, educate them on how to help their patients. That's amazing. I think that there's probably quite a few men in this room right now who are extremely interested in your product. Why, why are you looking at me? <laughs> well, you know, women's hair thins as we get older, too, so I, I might try some of this oil myself. Uh, that's great. So how much of this are you selling? Are you making a profit with your company? Um, yeah, we are making sales. So because when you first start a business, there's so many investment that has to be done. I mean, I'm paying attorneys to um, draft um, contracts and everything that I'm spending money on. We are getting sales. It's not a profit yet, but we are getting a lot of sales. And my sales have, from one year to year, have grown tremendously. For example, for this year, my sales for even the first quarter is more than what I made last year. That's great. Yeah. So what is your plan for marketing the product now going forward? So marketing the product is, um, is, is part of my plan, but it's very tough because when you delve into hair loss, you are delving into a medical place. Big companies are afraid to talk about um, scalp care and hair loss conditions because it's, it, they can get sued. So marketing has been like a dance where I even met um, a founder of a very prominent hair care line who basically said, this is you, you guys' problem to solve the, the small companies because now we're coming up to solve how can we market products that truly help men and women with scalp and hair care that helps them with their hair loss condition without falling into that trap. Howie? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes. Clearly, they brought me in specifically to hear your pitch. <laughs> so that yes, is, we did. by the way, great <laughs> casting, guys. <laughs> Check out Howie on our website. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, have you thought about, um, like, first of all, are you competing with companies like Rogaine and Hims? I think it is. You could say I compete with them, but my products are powered by botanicals. Um, essential oils like lemongrass so technically it, there's no way that we can have an FDA approved study to show that lemongrass reduce inflammation even though we know it does um, I, I actually know a dermatologist right now who's trying to run that that study so I compete with them but I have to some of them I can't really use the wording they use for marketing their product because they can truly say 
I will regrow your hair. But for example, I might have to say my product promotes growth because it's just really a legal um, minefield to do that. So it's really, I find it, it's like a challenge I'm re really ready to take on because um, a lot of women and men dealing with hair loss have been neglected because, because of that, because there's so many natural things that can help them, but you can't market it to them because of the legal loopholes. And a lot of the products that are given to you by, which I do advocate for all my customers to go to a dermatologist first because I think it's a 360 approach. However, sometimes some of the products they give you to use on your hair are not culturally appropriate to how you wear your hair. For example, they give you a steroid cream which is white that blends into you, that doesn't blend into your hair. And after three, four days of using it, you'll stop using it because everyone at work will ask you what's that on your hair. <laughs> However, my oil is an oil. It's a light oil. It blends in. You could use it as a pre-shampoo treatment. No one will know that you are wearing a product. It smells light. It smells amazing. You will lay next to your honey and not worry about your hair smelling strong. Um, so it's just really the way we market it. It's going to have to be, that's the challenge I'm taking on. So I think social media is heaven made for you, Instagram, because I'm on your website and looked before and after. Pictures worth a thousand words. So yes. if you can't say it, maybe you could just show it. That's what I've been doing. So yeah. once about once <laughs> a week, point. I post before and after pictures. I post my own before and after pictures because I had a huge false spot at the crown of my head. I post pictures of my customers who t send it in, the sides or... Um, so people are responding to that. Do the products work any quicker depending on the person's age? It, 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 you know, if it, you're an older guy, will it help uh, even them? Um, I don't think it's age related. That's why I tell everybody to really get diagnosed first because when you diagnose, then you know if it's something that you can actually even have any growth because there are some people who have hair loss that has been so there for so long that their follicles have shut down so they have scarring and it's completely smooth so you can never tell this person that you're going to regrow your hair not that they can't um they might see some growth but you can't really sell them uh, a miracles but really the education piece is like if you are experiencing hair loss today do not wait five years later to it to to tackle it start now do you think this is something that you could potentially I mean, obviously you're going down the manufacturing route but have you thought about licensing it to to a bigger player when you were speaking earlier, I thought about that and I was going to ask, that was the question I wanted to ask you. I currently manufacture and sell my product. However, you never know in the future, I might be open to that opportunity. I mean, I'm a believer if, if you know, you can, people think once they go down the manufacturing path, and it may be the right way for you to go, but a lot of people think once I manufacture, I can't then license. But if you've proven the market and you feel like, and maybe you do, maybe you don't, that that you've taken it as far as you can or it can only go a little further with you and your resources mm -hmm. or whatever, you might be better off licensing it to one of the big guys. You know, you just have to protect, make sure you're protected. Do you have, do you have protection? Yes, I do have protection with my manufacturer, for example, that they have to protect it as a trade secret. It's really hard to um, patent natural ingredients, but I have done everything in my power to protect my formula. I'll let these guys speak to that. I mean, you might be able to. First of all, I think if you have a customer base already and you've shown that it has market pull, I would think that that would make it even more attractive to a potential uh, licensor, uh, just because, uh, or licensee, just because whenever uh, somebody takes a license on a product, they're taking a little bit of a risk. And so if you can show that your product is selling, that reduces the risk for them and makes it more, more valuable. It is possible to license trade secrets. Uh, what it comes down to, though, is is the formulation reverse engineerable? If somebody can figure out what the ingredients are, um, then the trade secret may not help you so much. Mm -hmm. And so if, if it turns out to be a $10 million product, it might be worth it for a company to invest a lot of money in R&D to try to figure out what your formulation is. Mm -hmm. So. You know, usually a patent is better, but, you know, it goes back to the old example. Coca-Cola was a trade secret for years and years and years. Nobody could figure out what the formulation was, and it was a phenomenally successful product. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's definitely something you want to have a discussion with a professional if you haven't already. And even if you're uh, going into a new phase of your business, it may be a good idea to revisit that discussion at some point. Can I ask you a question? Yes. The name? The Vani Shop. That's, um, Warney is my nickname. That's what my older brother and my family used to call me. And um, I just felt like I always was in the kitchen, like, mixing things. So it's like the Warney shop. So it's 
T H E R O N N I E S H O P S H O P the Ronnie shop. I want to know how did you come up with a formulation that works? Um, so first I thought about what I would want a hair oil to be. So I wanted it number one to be very light and for the oil not to be heavy, and I wanted it to smell nice but then have all those qualities that I talked about, anti-fungal, anti-inflammatory, anti-bacterial. Um, so with that, so I found the essential oils that would do those things, and then I found the essential oil I liked the most, which was the lemongrass, and, I'm, and then I said, okay, that's the scent that I'm going with. So I just worked my way backwards that way, and then I made sure the mixture is safe for skin and, and scalp use. So does it work on everybody's scalp, no matter, like... Yep. race, yes. gender, or everything? That's a good question. Because currently I'm the face of my brand, a lot of people think, oh, this is a black hair product. So I try my hardest to make sure that my communication tells people, okay, no, this is a product for everyone. And I give direction on how to use it. So for someone like you, like my sister-in-law uses it and she's Caucasian, I would tell her, massage it in the night before you shampoo your hair. And then when you wake up, you shampoo your hair out. Or you could do 20 minutes before you shampoo your hair because um, a Caucasian woman doesn't really like to have hair oil in their hair because it might make their hair fly, flat. Someone who has curly or thick hair can just put the oil on their scalp and let it be because it won't really mess with their style. Shampoo and conditioner, anyone can use it. Well, I think I'm going to have to go to the Ronnie shop. Yes. <laughs> yes. Check that out. Yes. Ronnie shop .com. Yes, the Ronnie shop.com. You've got, you've got two new users right here. Yes. Yes. Two yes. new customers. Probably three. But. Yes. <laughs> I was being <laughs>